Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn GCP with Mahesh. Today we are going to see three GCP questions which I got in one of the interviews. So uh, these are very basic questions, but since uh, these were really interesting questions, I thought of sharing it with everybody. So let's get started. So a quick shout out, I'm starting my uh, batch five on Google Cloud Architect, a customized training. So if you are really interested, uh, let me know, uh, just drop me a message. I will share you further information. So let's get started with the three interview questions which I got interesting questions even though these are basics interesting questions let's get started so the first question which I got was on a virtual machine and uh, the question was the startup scripts so we can have startup scripts usually right when you create a virtual machine so this is the demos which most of us would have seen uh, when we learn a GCP concepts so if you just create a virtual machine I have given a name of the virtual machine as interview question one so if I scroll down under the management section you will have something called as startup script so here you can put a startup script something like uh, uh, what you want to install when the virtual machine gets started so I've also done a couple of videos on start scripts so you can look into the video if you want I can also put that in the description so the question was when you have a startup script what is the user which is going to be uh, which on on behalf of which user this startup script is going to be executed so that was the question so took a couple of minutes for me to think and uh, give an answer so first I thought it could be some specific user which every virtual machine is going to have then I felt okay um, and this was specifically on Linux so nothing on Windows so so on Linux they had asked so after thinking for a couple of minutes and then I gave a, a calculated guess saying that it is going to be root is what I mentioned and when I came back and checked uh, in the documentation I was able to uh, feel happy that the answer was correct so this is a link so if you go into this uh, link running startup scripts so if I just search for root it shows the instance always runs the startup script as root so this was the key thing uh, so now let's just verify that uh, based on our understanding so usually I guess uh, even a uh, couple of videos which I have done I made a mistake uh, putting like sudo apt hyphen get update this is what I would have done so since the startup script is going to be executed as root user you don't need to have a sudo that is a key thing so let's install uh, one more thing uh, sudo install minus Apache web server so this is the standard demos everybody does right so instead of putting sudo we'll try to verify whether this really going to work if without putting sudo if it's going to work it's very confirmed that it is going to be executed as a root user so that is a key message here so let's just turn on HTTP so that we should be able to access our uh, Apache web server on port 80 so let's wait for the VM to get provision and let's click on that instance uh, the IP address once it gets provisioned so let me just refresh it so it's getting provision yes the resource is now provision so just give a couple of minutes or 30 seconds roughly so that when we click on this hyperlink we should be able to see the stuffs uh, getting installed or not so if it's not installed let's see how to troubleshoot it also so let me just click on it it's taking time let me just give one more time a refresh yes it is working so the key message here is all the startup scripts gets executed as a root user that is a key part here so good so was able to answer this uh, it was a calculated guess but it was something which went well so the second question so people who have taken interviews I guess everybody watching this video would have taken an interview at one point of time um, uh, the second question was usually the interviews will ask a follow-up question right one after the back-to-back -back kind of stuff so now since I answered the question on startup script the next question which the interviewer asked me was uh, I have uh, I wanted to apply a, a specific startup script uh, but I don't want to use the normal way of putting this either in a Google Cloud storage bucket or putting it in uh, uh, in the metadata field so I want to apply it for all the virtual machines in a specific project what is a way what is the best practice of doing it so uh, so this again took a minute or two for me to think and then uh, it was not a calculated guess I was able to uh, demystify it it took me time there so the answer is 
leverage the metadata option. So if you just go to metadata, you can create a metadata. So it's going to use a metadata server behind the scenes. So one metadata which I wanted to add here is startup script. So startup script and let's have a script something like update and we know we should not put sudo uh, apt get update then apt hyphen get install but whenever you are doing anything with the startup script just minus y silently or quietly doing the installation is very very important because you cannot type yes there because this is going to be once the system is up it is going to run the script so at that time you would not have access so make sure it is always in a quiet mode so let me just install git just to verify whether this is going to work or not so this is my startup script where i have configured it not at an individual virtual machine but at a metadata so this is for the entire virtual machines in this project learn gcp with mahesh let me just save it and once we save it you see the script is all good so what we'll do is we'll go and create a a virtual machine so i'm going to call this virtual machine with the name uh, interview question 2 so interview question 2 so let me make it to singapore and I'll leave everything default and just wanted to show you under your management if you go to your startup script It is empty the metadata is also empty okay so that is a key thing here let me just click on create and once the instance gets created we'll just log into the virtual machine and see whether the git is installed so by default in a debian operating system git will not be installed so uh, that is for sure so and once the instance gets created let's go ahead and verify it so let me just refresh once just to make sure everything is there so ssh into this virtual machine and let's type git hyphen hyphen uh, version and verify whether it is there or not so this is one way of verifying it so there's a second way let me show you that once i show you this option so we are in the virtual machine so let me just do git hyphen hyphen version and see it is working awesome so we are able to do it so putting everything in the metadata will apply for any virtual machines uh, if there's an existing virtual machine if you just restart it it is going to apply it for example uh, uh, somebody watching this video can ask a question like the script which we applied in the star metadata will it apply to the first VM which we created so it will not apply to the first VM the reason is if I click on this first VM there is a specific startup script which you have put at the virtual machine level so it is like local scope so the the one which we have put at the project level is at the metadata side so that will not be applied here because we are overriding that with our own startup script so it may not apply so if you want this to be applied the one which has been applied at the metadata level or at the project level you need to remove this then it will apply stop and restart it that will apply so that is the key part there now the last uh, interview question which was the most easiest pun so no calculated guess uh, did not take two minutes it was very easy uh, the reason was uh, because of doing uh, trainings every uh, uh, many trainings uh, so it was very easy there so that interview question was uh, on kubernetes so the interview was in a very uh, progressive way so virtual machines he finished then he jumped into kubernetes the question was what is the default operating system used by the the nodes when you provision a kubernetes cluster and i did not even wait for a second and i instantaneously answered the answer is if i just click on my nodes the answer is container optimized os cos so this is the default operating system uh, which is going to be used by all the nodes when you provision a kubernetes cluster so the, you get other options but if you ask me the best option is container optimized os so recently i also saw some uh, article uh, where there was some vulnerability attack so if you have used something on ubuntu or anything so kubernetes cluster which where the nodes are using ubuntu operating system has to be patched but the uh, virtual machine which is sorry the kubernetes cluster which is using or uh, to be very specific the nodes uh, of the kubernetes cluster which is using container optimized os does not require any patching there so at least based on that uh, vulnerability so that shows this operating system is much optimized for running uh, 
containers so prefer to use this so and that is a default one if you were to if you don't do anything for a kubernetes cluster so so those were the three uh, interview questions which i got uh, as i mentioned these were basic questions but interesting questions hence thought of sharing it with you so do let me know in the comment section which of the question you really liked or something which was really interesting uh, uh, happy to comment on that and thanks for watching